My name is Doug Johnson, and I have a unique perspective on building sales development and sales operations prospecting strategies for earlier stage companies as an engineer uh, mentality, and also applying that inside of as an operator for earlier stage companies, hardware, software companies, and also um, advising, consulting. I've been delivering this men this workshop for about five years, but it, it continues to it'll evolve and iterate, right? It's not the same one that was five years ago. And what we're going to talk about is how to maximize the rate at which you can learn, which market segments are responding to your message, and which messages would work. And it's a function of a couple of different things. Uh, it's the technology that you're using to create leverage for yourself. It's how you segment your market so that you give yourself a better chance at being successful. And it's understanding which, uh, which metrics you can be tracking to determine what is working better than the other. So there, there are two workshops that, that we do. This is the first one. It's the sales stack, the sales process, the prospecting strategy, mainly for groups who are led by a founder who's spending half of their time prospecting and selling. You might also have one, two, three other people. Um, but this is mainly for that type of group. We're going to be largely be speaking around about uh, organizations that might have a thousand or more prospects in their market. They might be selling a product that's roughly a thousand dollars or more on an annual basis. That's not a hard constraint for this, but it just really means that you have a market of a certain size that operational infrastructure is important and you're selling a product that you may at one point in time want to introduce salespeople to sell it. B2B, B2G, B2B, B2C, all of them would apply. The second workshop, which we're not doing, but I'll just mention it because it is accessible on demand and uh, we might uh, schedule this in the future, but it's more about the moment where you were adding more and more salespeople. So if you're raising a round and in six months you intend to hire four salespeople, there are certain risks related to the mishire, right? Or unnecessarily lengthening the time between their first day and when they're fully productive. So from a sales operations perspective, sales development, today we're talking more about pipeline generation, risks, opportunities at an earlier stage. And then the second workshop is about when you're introducing people to create leverage for the organization, how best to support them and de-risk that. All right, the different topics that we're gonna go in and out of, uh, you can see them on the left for this particular workshop. Funnel, segmenting of the market, how that informs a prospecting strategy, metrics that you would, that are important, both on a daily, weekly basis, metrics related to the uh, variables related to the market your segment you're serving, sales stack as it helps you create leverage for yourself and power and reaching more and more people more effectively, and then comments on the messaging strategy and how to improve the strength of the message. All right, the first topic. And if there are any questions along the way, please raise your hand or speak up probably would be easier because I don't think I can easily see a, a hand raise, uh, a virtual hand raise. So the funnel, uh, we all commonly think about a funnel, a sales funnel. I don't know if any of us as, as children thought about a funnel, maybe like in baking and, and you know putting oil into an engine. But I, as an engineer, as an operation person, as a salesperson, see funnels in life and all the time. Uh, and it makes me smile, uh, even, but, I, but I think about them in terms of the steps that it takes to progress something through the graduations, the steps, the friction in between each step um, and how to re remove that friction. So oil in a funnel, there's viscosity and there's a friction along that, that wall of the funnel. And it's the same in a sales funnel. There's friction at every sales process or every sales stage, but understanding what you want to accomplish in each stage and, and the conversion rates in each stage at scale, help you understand where to spend time if and where to identify if there's more friction. There is a there's a funnel that precedes this sales funnel that we'll talk about called the prospecting funnel. This is key in helping you learn more quickly, and I'll explain a little bit more. There's a tendency, especially me as an engineer, to over-engineer it and to try to make it be great. We'll talk about an example of what the what 
what over indexing on the the definition of the funnel looks like and how to you know try to try to avoid that and how this leads into the ability to have metrics a small number of metrics that are really important from a decision making perspective and understanding risk here are some before we get into this first activity which is in the spreadsheet and you probably are moving around that you might be there are some big questions that we're thinking about when we are going to define these stages, these steps. And I'm not gonna go through all of them here, but I'll allow you to read them as I slowly talk about the importance of um, defining each stage. And that's what the activity is gonna be. So if we have an organization with one or a couple or more people that are progressing leads or opportunities through a stage or in a, in a funnel, if there's a difference in perspective uh, on what allows you to progress something through to a different stage, you can see how that can surface inconsistencies, it can surface confusion, it can surface uh, a lack of trust in the data and lack of trust in the pipeline. So it's important to, from a trust perspective, from an alignment perspective, from a confidence in the probability of something progressing to identify and define the stages. That's the basis of it. You can see at scale, if you have multiple sales reps, we'll just paint a picture of the future. If you have multiple salespeople, maybe you are selling, maybe you have another person selling. If you use terminology, if, you, if, you, if the organization can Say, if someone can say that it's in a stage, but it's not really in that particular stage, you can have a misalignment and then frustration grows in an individual and, and it sort of can devolve uh, and break down. So it's really important to contemplate some big questions as you're defining your steps. I'll pause and I'll ask for the group if there are any questions related to maybe ambiguity or the importance of these questions before we get into the activity. I wish I could give a, a bonus point for the first person who speaks up, but you know how it is. I don't think Zoom has caught on to that. Nope, no bonus points, none in the settings now. Okay, so this is what over-engineering something looks like out of the gate. All of the green text in here is something that you're not gonna be able to know right now, largely. And so contemplating every single detail that you would want to accomplish in each of your steps is not valuable right now, but there needs to be some framework that you can then build out, some skeleton. So the important things to note here are some of the black text, and I apologize for those who are colorblind, maybe I'll, I'll update that in the future, but you can see there are some things that are in a slightly different uh, text, probably a little darker. The stages are important. So what are the number of stages? What are the stages that we're gonna have? But also important to that is, what can we verify from the customer, from that prospect? What actions are they going to do or take before you advance someone beyond that step? A common thing that is done is that you would say, someone in the organization says, Yes, I've sent them pricing. Well, sending pricing doesn't mean that they jettison themselves to a proposal presented stage. If they haven't shared their business challenges, if they haven't agreed that your solution can solve that challenge, if they haven't identified who else in the organization is gonna be evaluating um, or needs to be a part of the evaluation process, sending pricing is simply done either because they've asked and you've done it or premature. I would recommend holding on to that pricing until you have some things that you've gotten from the process. But in short, before we get into the activity, you can, you can attempt to over-engineer it. Don't do that. We'll just have a couple of stages for your particular sales process, and we're going to introduce some verifiable outcomes. So each one of these stages, you can see that I've started to populate example customer, customer verifiable outcomes. And outside of this, you can continue and completely fill them out if you want, and they'll evolve and iterate over time. 
but we'll just spend a couple of moments to uh, define what we want to capture prior to doing a full discovery, prior to, prior to doing a full understanding of, of what their business pains are and presenting the solution that we have. But there are things that you're going to want to accomplish in advance. And there might be a moment that you introduce a, a shorter uh, call that you're having with them prior to doing a full discovery. So if that's the case and you are in C11, what's the agenda? In short, what's the agenda you wanna set with them as to what's being accomplished? And it could be as simple as C11 could be accomplished and you can move it into that stage if they simply agree to a call with you for 10 or 15 minutes where there's a certain agenda. But after that, let's assume that, that you've had that call, what do you wanna accomplish on that call that first call where you then schedule probably 30 or 40 minutes of time with someone to do a full discovery. There might be things, and this is the activity. So C12, what C11 and C12, what do you want to accomplish from that prospect? So I'll, I'll can, and now's where the activity where you can start doing it. I'll start talking about some of the things that might be common and then you might introduce that into yours. You might, it might give you creative ideas about what else you would wanna add. But in short, what can your research prior to reaching out to them and married with that initial 10 minute call that you have, what do you think you wanna accomplish in that time to then say to yourself, this is worth me spending 30 or 40 minutes of my time to do a discovery with them? Some common, as you're perhaps um, starting it in your own spreadsheet, some common hurdles that you might want to step over with them before you spend 40 minutes is that person's role relative to a decision about your solution or relative to their likely understanding of the pain that you're solving, you might want to have some, be a certain distance away from that person. Meaning you're not going to, everyone in the organization is not a suitable person for you to spend time doing a discovery with. So how close do you wanna to be to that person? This helps you define a little bit uh, who would be included in an account-based prospecting strategy. The different titles or roles that would be acceptable for you to spend 30 or 40 minutes with. You might then imagine yourself prospecting into someone, getting a response, but instead of scheduling 30 or 40 minutes with them, in your first 10, 10 minute call with them, you're attempting to get to the right person. So there's a slight difference. The, the point of title, if you will, or authority or, or relationship to the economic buyer or the decision maker, the person that you want to spend time with, your precious time to, to uncover their pains and, their, and to explain the solution, probably has some proximity or distance from the pain or the decision making process. So think about the specifics of who that person is. You can give them a title if you want, right? You could, you could say that they're able to answer a question in that first 10 minute call that indicates to you that they are aware of it. So something in that 10 minute call that you have, you might uncover, there might be a specific question you ask, whether it's title based or whether it's something more nuanced where you ask that and then you know this person is worth my time to spend 40 minutes discovering talking to them because I know they'll have information. I know they'll know more. So person is one. Um, the, there might be something about the size of the company. Me, again, right? you, you won't want to spend time with everyone 
whether it's person or every type of company, because they might not be a good fit or might meet, not meet your, your requirements in terms of a minimum threshold. It could also be that a certain industry that they're in, if you have, if you're prospecting a certain industry, you've realized is not ready. They're going to take too long to buy their, your, your product doesn't, isn't ready to serve them. So where you might be drawn to talk to someone or you get introduced, it's again, not worth your time. So those are things that might guide the, um, the, should I say the, I was going to say sensitivities to guarding your time, Make, making a, a good steward of the time you had is how close are they to a decision or, or to the evaluation, the solution or the pain and how suitable is this company in terms of size or industry or some other characteristic for me to be able to serve them and solve it. And as you, you can, you can see there's indication and guidance into what you might want to accomplish in subsequent stages. So market segmentation, the, the importance of market segmentation from the perspective of probable sales velocity, meaning the probable rate at which you can generate pipeline for how much time it takes you to do that is important because it's going to give you some, some clarity, some focus um, on the market segments you're addressing with some confidence that you've sequence them in a way that you're going to get the most out of your time. And when we talk about messaging and messaging strategies, you're going to be able to align your messaging a little bit more with that particular market segment. So we're going to talk about a framework to help you segment your market, and it's called prospecting velocity, sales velocity. I'll, I'll talk to you about the formula, and it's a very simple formula, but it's a It'll help you uh, create guidance. We'll go through the activity. It will generate a prospecting calendar for you. So just think about it, right? Every four weeks, you'll be testing a new market segment. You'll get the derivative of a pipeline that you're creating, but you also get the derivative of learning which market segments are responding at a higher rate. And then you'll be able to communicate either internally or externally the rate at which you're able to learn, how you're running tests and experiments. And you can think about a... a, a scenario 12 months down the road or however the right time frame for you when you're when you're introducing an aspect into your um into a capital raise there's a component related to your sales strategy and what you've learned to date so it's gonna it's it might be it might serve as a a, a, a component of that as you as you generate interest and as you give confidence to potential investors so prospecting velocity The numerator is the top, the denominator is at the bottom. These are all things that you can capture inside of that prospecting funnel, that funnel that precedes a sales funnel, that sales funnel that might take three to nine months to, to progress through. The prospecting funnel is only going to take 30 to 45 days. All these things can be captured and known inside of 30, 45 days, which allows you to learn a lot more quickly. The average deal size, the average size of pipeline for each of these uh, prospects that you're able to progress to the point where they might be an educated person around uh, the importance of crypto and the, you know, to whatever that example, and I know everyone isn't getting there, but whatever that um, threshold is, what's the size of that potential opportunity? How many prospects did you reach out to? And we'll get into the activity and this is all be, it'll all be a lot clearer. What's the conversion rate between reaching out to someone and them engaging with you and then reaching your threshold of becoming an opportunity. And how long in the denominator, how long does it take to talk to all these people to get them to that point? This is a proxy. Uh, I wouldn't say, a, a, I was going to say a, a, a certain type of proxy for CAC. It's just the, it's the thing that you might aim towards in the earlier stage. CAC is a measure of how much it costs for how many clients you can generate. And because it's a sale, it's dependent on the sales cycle length and it's dependent on larger sample sizes to give you confidence in CAC, it's likely that you might not be there for a year and a half to really truly value CAC, to really have confidence in it. This, 
can be accomplished. You can get confidence much sooner, right? And give you directional guidance on it. So average deal size, number of prospects, conversion rate, days to complete the prospecting cycle. When you think about your market segment, some market segments, you might have a perspective that the deal size is gonna be larger or smaller. Some market segments, you might have a perspective that they're more attracted to your offer or not, the conversion rate. Some market segments you might feel are gonna take longer to prospect into and get a response than others. These three components are how we're, what we're gonna think about when we segment the market, when we create a campaign calendar, how large it probably will be, the, your belief in the likely response rate, and your belief in how long it might take to, to um, get them to generate a response. Now, you don't know for certain all of these, but it will guide you in, and it'll show you, we'll do the, the math, the model's already built, very short. It'll show you what you should sequence in, the sequence of your, your market segments. And again, when you create that power and focus, you get, you get to align your message to them. You get some concerted effort to understand the pains that they might have, perhaps informs your product roadmap if that's a component of it. So this is an example of a, an agricultural, this is a real ag tech company. They, were, they went through this workshop, but I just introduced it here. They have different farm types that they serve. That's a, that's a driver away. The way in which they slice down the farm type has an impact in the, that prospecting velocity from their perspective. Date farms, aquaponic, hydroponic, fruit, and vegetable. So how might the, and th this is really industry, right? For some, it might be industry, but you can think about market segments in a different way. I introduced farm type and number of trees because probably no one on this is, is slicing their market by farm tree, farm type and number of trees, but you're thinking about it in a different way. So what are these ways in which you contemplate that there might be a, a change in size, response rate, that type of thing? Geography is another one for them because they're, they're conserving water and water availability is different in geographies. So if you can conserve that asset or that, that product in different geographies, it's important. And then also uh, almost commonly uh, ubiquitous across probably most organizations, the size of the farm based on number of trees is indicative of how much they use and the ultimate value of your product for them. So the activity that we're gonna go through is uh, starting this, starting the process of, of editing or completing or extending the, um, that gray area and then filling out what some of the ones underneath of that are. So that's the first activity. And the second activity we'll do is to create cross segments with, with a potential idea on, on how large the opportunity they are. So I'll share my screen, move over. And this is market segmentation and then prospecting calendar are the two things that we're going through. So in this particular example, I'll walk you through it. Uh, you would edit farm type, geography number two, you would edit that. You would change it to be reflective of your own way that you're segmenting the market. And then you might introduce some things or some um, uh, ways in which you would slice it or segment it by that type. I'll note that there are a couple of other variables that we'll come back to later on that are not based off of the prospect and who they are, but more about uh, who's processing it. You can see that if you're doing outbound source right now, and that's the only thing, and there's one person, it's pretty simple. It's outbound and you're the only person. But as you grow the team, the source of the opportunity or lead, the person who's um, developing the opportunity or uh, prospecting into them, the person who's closing the deal when it was created, all of these things in a growing organization, a round and beyond, you start to seg slice the information so that you can understand where you're having the most effectiveness and who needs help. 
So you're probably starting to do this exercise. It's going to drive the second part, which is completing these uh, the blue items in here. The blue items drive the, the, the black calculated values. So the blue are inputs and the black is, is uh, formulaically calculated. And in this particular instance, the founders, uh, there's two founders went through this exercise. They were contemplating a couple of scenarios and I didn't introduce everything in here, but they try to keep it um, to say two, two, two variables in, in, in the equation. You can see it here. Um, date farms, they had a preference and a bias towards date farms because that's where they were, that's where they, their background was. So they had more confidence in the date farm applicability. They had some more case studies in there. And so you can see that their prospecting conversion rate as they estimated, not forced in here, but just estimated because they had some belief was different than the other farm types that they could serve. They knew what they, they thought they knew what the size of deal would be. And then they thought that, the, that they knew what, what um, the length of prospecting cycle would be. And as you go through this exercise where you create the ways in which you would segment, formulate an opinion on some different segments of the market that you might wanna consolidate and bring into one test. If you introduce in column C, D, and E, the size, the conversion rate, you'll start to get a velocity. And now it becomes very clear that they should prioritize date farms of 50K or greater uh, date farms with 50,000 or more trees. They didn't have this perspective in advance, but you can see that the, re the potential velocity that they think it's gonna have over aquaponic farms of the other types is two or four times as, as fast. So why not initiate your prospecting calendar with the market segment that you believe is gonna move more quickly through it? This on the prospecting results, this is, this is what you might see eventually. It's, the same, it's a very similar thing to the prospecting calendar. Um, we're introducing the number of prospects that have finished a prospecting effort, number have engaged with you, opportunities created, the size of the pipeline, and that gives you your real prospecting velocity. In addition to the pipeline that was created, in this situation, um, looks to be about 530,000 in pipeline, there's also a better understanding of the velocity of each of these market segments. So you can imagine if you do a large and a small across five different market segments, you would have 10 tests, right? And you'd start to understand the relative velocity of each of these in addition to getting the pipeline, in addition to getting opportunity to, to include some of that feedback into the roadmap. This helps mainly with the narrative, um, fast paced learning narrative, um, putting the right time and resources once you scale and add more uh, into the right areas or into the more, more target rich or fruitful or quicker moving uh, market segments.